everyone, this is me Aastha and today we are going to be talking about the geological ages and hominid evolution. This content is taken from the book A History of Ancient and Early Medieval India by Upinder Singh. So first we are going to say, talk about the humans. We know that the humans are the center of universe, right? In present we think it's all about humans, everything. But the science has proved that it is not so. Why? Because as we all know that the earth is 4.5 billion years old, humans have made the late entry in an around 200,000 years ago. So how do we know all these things? We know these things by the physical science. The advance in the physical science in the 20th century has amplified our understanding. We have got to know about these things like how the humans have evolved. From the genetic science, it has unveiled the complex mechanism that underlay the biological evolution of species. We know how the species has evolved through the researches. For example, DNA analysis. DNA analysis has given us the evidence how the humans have evolved. Like, we also have some theories regarding geological and biological evolution. Like, these are theories given by some of the scholars. Like, for example, Charles Robert Darwin. His book, The Origin of Species, has explained how the species arose due to the adaptation and how the process of natural selection led to the survival of the fittest. Darwin, his, uh, his work has been influenced by the Charles Lyell principle of geology, um, in which he explains how the past changes in the Earth's surface, it resulted in the still uh, continuing process such as wind action, uh, erosion, earthquakes and volcanic eruption. Then comes Thomas Henry Huxley's uh, evidence as to man's place in nature extended it extended the Darwin's idea of evolution of human being. So these all the uh, theories have helped it un helped us understand the um, how did the human have uh, humans appeared in the earth, on the earth. So all these evolutionary theories these are counter to the biblical theories. Why? Because we all know that the biblical theories, it says that there is a divine agency and they say that the, these are all part of the divine's plan, right? So it is not easy to accept because it, it runs counter to these biblical theories and, or, and also it is not easy to accept that the idea the reptiles and insect has appeared on the earth long before human beings or to recognize there are similarities between human and chim chimpanzees through in the natural science it has helped us to understand the prehistoric archaeology how because stone tools have been found and reported in the early decades for example the french custom a uh, custom officer named jack butcher de perts has discovered a flint tool in Somme valley he said that the, some instances have been found along the bone of extinct animals where remains of humans who had lived long before the biblical flood his work was greeted with great skepticism. It was questioned, but it was authenticated after it was confirmed by the geologist Hugh Falkner, Joseph Pristwich, and archaeologist John Evans. So today, geologists divide the history of Earth into four eras or ages. Primary, that is Paleozoic. Secondary, that is Mesozoic. Tertiary and Quaternary. Tertiary and Quaternary together forms Cenozoic that is the age of mammals so cenozoic is divided in seven epochs out of which pleistocene and holocene are the most important for us because it says the story of human evolution pleistocene is about 1.6 maya million years ago and holocene it is the recent period in which we live about 10,000 years ago in biology we all know that there are species and the gradual changes in the heritable feature of the species population over the successive generation due to the change in the gene frequencies process of natural selection which favor traits that helps the species in adapting the environment and over time this process gives rise to the new species so the term species and genus they are the center of the discussion of the evolution these species organisms they are similar in physical structure, behavior and interpret with each other or which could do so if they had access to each other. 
A genus is an assemblage of related species. For example, we can take Canis familiaris, that is domesticated dog, Canis lupus, wolf, Canis aureus, jackals. So these all belong to the same genus, Canis, right? Paleoanthropologists, they have used the fossil evidences to piece together the story of the biological and cultural evolution of the human. It is definitely not an easy task, but sometimes difficult to identify a species on the basis of incomplete skeletal material and it is not always clear whether their remains are representative of the entire population of, the, of an area. But still, the process of human evolution can be identified, as can the implication of the crucial biological marker, such as increase in cranial capacities, changes in the pelvic structure, and beginnings of bipedalism, walking erect on two legs, and modification of dental structure due to the change of food habits. These are some aspects due to which we can understand the stages of the human development, right? Some important aspects of cultural evolution of the early human includes the making of some stones, uh, stone tools, the emergence of some kind of social organization, beginning of the languages and so on. The early hominids were member of Australopithecus genus, who lived roughly between 4.4 to 1.8 Maya, that is million years ago. Their remains have been so far discovered and identified in Africa. The earliest of these is Ardipithecus, which seems to have evolved from the common ancestor of Hominid. Now we come to the genus Homo. Fossil evidence of the early representative of genus Homo, Homo habilis, hand using man, was found at the sites such as Kolbi Fora in Kenya and Odi by George in Tanzania. It is dated about 2 million years ago. The earliest stone tools that have been found at Hadar in Ethiopia and have been dated about 2.5 million years ago. Homo erectus, which means fully erect posture, appeared in the East Africa around 1.7 million years ago. From here, the species seems to have been spread to various parts of Africa, Asia and Europe. The first Homo sapiens appeared little less than 500,000 years ago. From about 130,000 years ago, there are evidence of the Homo sapiens Neanderthalis in various parts of Western and Central Asia and in Europe. Whether the Neanderthalis evolved in Homo sapiens or whether they became extinct remains a mystery. Apart from Africa and Europe, hominids remains have also been found in various parts of Asia. Remains of Homo erectus in Java have been dated between 1 to 2 million years ago and were associated with animal bones of many species but no stone tools. Remains of Homo erectus discovered in Zocodian caves 50 km southwest of Beijing have been dated between 0.58 to 0.25 Maya. This site also yielded over 20,000 stone tools and bones of 96 mammals, mammalian species. So Homo sapiens, they have seemed to appear in Africa between 195,000 and 150,000 years ago and eventually it may have replaced all the Homo species. Important fossil remains have come from the sites of Horto in Ethiopia, where hominids remains were found along with stone tools and animal bone in year dated between 160,000 to 154,000 years ago. The question, there are many questions to which there are yet no definite answers and which remains matter of debate. It is possible that the Homo sapiens evolved in Africa and they migrated to various parts of Asia and Europe or the migration out of Africa could have happened at the earlier stage and modern Homo sapiens may have evolved from Homo erectus and Akai Homo sapiens more or less simultaneously on a definite continent. Evolution was not a neat unilear process, one species making way for another, 
there is evidence from various parts of the world of overl overlaps and coexistence of species. For example, the remain of Old Avia George in East Africa shows the coexistence of the Homo habilis and Australopithecus. And there is similar evidence of the coexistence of the Neanderthalis and automatical modern human in the Eastern Mediterranean. So that's all for today. If you like my video, share, like and subscribe. Thank you.